it, it's a, it's a sense of purpose. But what what animates Israelis here is a sense that what makes life worthwhile is not just having this thing or having that thing or or having you know a, an account sheet which is bigger than it was two years ago. Uh, there's a sense of purpose here that I think is is really palpable, and you feel it at all different times. And that's what leads, for example, to all of these um, these nonprofits. And I'll just say one thing about those high tech people. And you said, you know, you can look at it either way. That so many Israelis were involved in high tech, and it's true. I think one of the things people said about high tech is, you know, they're the grandchildren of people that founded the state. They're the grandchildren of the people that drained the swamps. They're the grandchildren of the people that guarded the fire line at night. They're the grandchildren of the ones who, with their bare hands, built etc. And look at them now. They're sitting in these steel and glass towers and they're coding all day and they're trying to go public and they're trying to have an exit. And then they take the elevator down, they get into their BMW or their Audi and they drive home to Ramad Aviv Gimel to their fancy little house. What the hell has happened to us? People were saying. Those are the people that ran the protests in Israel over the course of the last three months demanding that democracy not be cheapened, saying that they cared about this country being both Jewish and democratic. The reservoirs of caring, even among these seemingly disconnected high-tech people, were unbelievably deep reservoirs. And I saw it with my kids, and I saw it with my kids' friends who are busy working in startups all day long, but at three o'clock in the morning are out in the streets holding flags, protesting, um, and my son, when one of my kids who was in a, in a special forces unit for eight years and has had, I think, a lot of powerful experiences in this country of all different sorts, said to us just a couple of days ago that that night, I think it was Sunday night of this week, being out there at three o'clock in the morning with his flag after having worked all day and knowing he was going to go home at four o'clock and start working again because he'd missed too much of the workday, he said it was the most powerful moment of his entire life. And, and I was struck by that. And I think it really speaks to as much as Israel's become a very, very modern country, seemingly so far removed from those early passionate debates between Herzl and his compadres, you know, in Basel in 1897 and other places around the world in the following years. Uh, Herzl planted the seeds of something that I think are much deeper than people gave it credit for a sense of purpose, a sense of belonging, a sense of responsibility for the future of the Jewish people. Uh, and just to go back to the very first question that you asked, you know, how do you measure whether a country is a success, which is what I was trying to do in the book as we get to 75 years? These protests are a huge sign of success, irregardless of what one thinks about the judicial reform, irregardless of what one thinks about the government, irregardless of what one thinks about this particular coalition or a different one, that these hundreds of thousands of people so passionately care about what their parents and grandparents and great grandparents built, it's hard to think of a, an indicator that would point to greater success of this extraordinary little experiment called the Jewish state. 